Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we are playing Anno 1404. Oh, it's a bloody lovely game. I'm so excited to play it. Honestly, this game fills me with so much nostalgia. I don't know about you, but I've personally played so much out of Anno. It is right up there with Age of Empires 2, EU4, CK2, as some of my favorite games of all time. Of course, The Witcher 3 and OpenTTD are the best games of all time, but beyond them, Anno 1404 is probably in the third spot. I'm sure many of you disagree with me in the comments and are slamming away trying to compose fantastical essays about how Roblox is actually Game of the Year 2019. So if you've seen Anno 1404, give me a shout ladies and gentlemen. I kind of want to know how many of you are out there in this world. In fact, how many of you are still playing this game? Because with Anno 1800 on the horizon, I think this game is going to be having a bit of a resurgence. Anyway, without further ado, I think we should break this game. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are we doing? Well, naturally, it is I, the Spiffing Brit, and we're in the game to completely and utterly destroy it. I love this game so much, which is why it will bring a tear to my eye as I absolutely decimate its in-game economy. So, before we begin, make sure you're sat back, you're really relaxed, maybe you've got a nice little blanket, maybe you've turned on the fire, maybe you've summoned Edmund the Fourth, your butler, of course, uh, to bring you a nice warm cup of tea and place it down in front of you. you might even be feeling as wonderful as to give me a lovely like on this video. Oh, you absolutely kind sausage. You know what? Each like on this video is going to be one tea bag that I hand out at the Yorkcon convention in Bristol. That's right, I'm going to be at the Yorkcon convention. Some of you might not know, but I'm for some reason a member of the Yorks cast. I know they accepted me! And to think all it took was panel beating Terps with 40 tea bags to actually accept me into the Yorks cast. But yes, for each individual like on this video, I will hand out a tea bag at the Yorkcon convention. So be it that this video receives 10,000 likes, I will hand out 10,000 tea bags. Bags. Oh god, my accountant's not going to be happy with this. Be it that this video receives 20,000 likes, I will hand out 20,000 tea bags. Oh well, let's just see how crazy you guys can do. But nonetheless, let us dive into this wonderful game. Now this game is really unique and has some wonderful voice acting. For example, when decided in a scenario. Oh, becoming an elector. Be a diplomat. I must say, I feel quite intimidated when you select a scenario. Oh my god, there's so much going on! So, ladies and gentlemen, we will be playing a lovely continuous game. This game has an absolutely fantastic campaign with some very deviously devilish plot twists. However, we won't be touching upon any of them. Instead, we will be enjoying a lovely continuous game where you just sit back, relax. Seriously, I just got tabbed out of the game because someone sent me a friend request on Epic Games. Seriously? Epic Games? What? <laughs> Oh god, I'm uninstalling you. Why did I even get satisfactory? Okay, right. All that put aside, it's time we get on with this wonderful game. So yes, we'll be building an empire so large, so wide, and so wonderfully British that even the Queen will be proud, and she will personally high-five and salute each and every one of us for taking part in this glorious empire. Now, there are many of you in the comment section who are saying that actually I'm just a government agent who is tasked solely with brainwashing you in preparation for the second British Empire. Which will probably be marked with us crossing, I don't know, the 1 million sub mark. And then a certain trigger word will be uttered by the Her Majesty herself, which will trigger something in you to suddenly whip out all of the Union Jacks you have stashed away. And lo and behold, the Second British Empire begins. But this time with more tea. Now, when it comes to our actual base game start, we're just going to have two medium difficulty AIs and one lovely easy one. We'll put the Corsairs, who are the pirates, to medium strength, and we're all going to start with a trade treaty with each other, which should make Make everyone a bit more friendly and hopefully not going to drive everyone into war immediately. So ladies and gentlemen, our aim today is to do the most British thing and ignore having a large amount of inhabitants or ignore having a good amount of diplomats around about or just completing quests. No, 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 no. Our aim today is to accumulate 1 million gold. So how fast can the Smithing Brit do whilst breaking a game? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So let us start the game. Oh my, look at this lovely little artwork. Honestly, looking at it is making me a bit parched. I'm going to need to fetch some water. And then heat up said water and add a tea bag. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, never miss an opportunity for a cup of tea. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
Today we're going to be doing something wonderful. We're going to be doing a item duplication glitch. Now these lovely bad boys have existed in games for centuries, honestly. I'm sure many of you will have a fond first memory when you encountered your first item duplication glitch, be it some of the wonderful ones which have destroyed World of Warcraft and RuneScape and probably my favourite ones all exist around the games of Morrowind and Skyrim. They were absolutely crazy. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. We set sail. Right, and here we are in the game, ladies and gentlemen, and immediately we're greeted by Lord Richard Northborough, who is effectively the hand of the king who will be handing us missions and telling us what to do. Now, immediately we want to colonize our first island, and we're going to settle for this island over here. Now, you might ask, why are we going for this uninhabited island out of, you know, all of those lovely islands we have down here in the bottom left? There's a whole host of islands we could colonize. Well, this island has a few major key benefits. Number one, it's close to the Corsairs, who yes, will attack us, but can also trade with us. Number two, it's not too far away from Lord Richard Northborough over here, allowing us to trade with him if necessary. And number three, it's got this lovely thing here, an excavation site. This, if we get a road to it, allows us to go on excavations, which will dig up random spontaneous items, which guess what, have completely and utterly broken benefits. Anyway, we're going to be sending both of our ships over there to colonize it. Or actually, for the smaller ship, I have a separate mission. For our lovely smaller ship, he's going to go back to Lord Richard Northborough, and he's actually going to settle a new colony on this second island here. The reason being that the storehouse of this colony will be incredibly close to our nearest trading partner. So I'm just going to let the game run at its normal speed now. So we're going to go over to Lord Richard Northborough over here. This is, of course, part one of our super secret plan, and we're going to buy some tools and some wood. Now, it is going to cost us 2,000 gold, good lord. Yeah, we only have 30,000 other stuff, but hey, we'll pay for that. So immediately, we're going to sail a lovely ship on over from the main port over here to here, where we are going to be setting up our first port. Oh, and Lord Richard Northborough is so happy with our flourishing trade relationship, he's given me 10 honour. Lovely. I am now very honourable. Well... Actually, I think they're going to discover the opposite very soon. Anyway, we have our little ship over here, which allows us to place down our first harbour. Now, we want it as close to the trading building as possible, so we'll place it down here. And now we've claimed this entire island and named it Goldford. Very nice. Now, this island is just going to be a little bit... Uh trash, honestly. Yeah, it's not going to be the best island in the world. So we'll just set it up with some basic stuff, like a woodcutter to chop down trees, because who doesn't like a good bit of deforestation, and a fisherman to solve all of your dietary requirements with one single food. Meanwhile, our second island over here, we're just going to settle immediately and whap down our building warehouse right about... Oh, you know what? I'm going to place it over here. And we're bam, the warehouse is down. So we've claimed two islands, and the AI have claimed, um... None, it would seem. But hey, you know, AI is just a little bit slower than us. They'll catch up eventually. Or will they? So we're going to place down a marketplace right about here. Now around the marketplace we'll build houses, and houses will pay tax. Over here we're going to place down a kind of warehouse, which will allow us to harvest goods from this local area. And we will attach a road to said warehouse, so that we can attach ourselves to the dig site. So let's get our first people down. First, you want to surround your marketplace so that you don't accidentally cut it off from access to roads. And then you want to select your lovely houses and just slap down as many of these bad boys as you can physically afford with the amount of wood you have supplied. There we go, I've placed down as many houses as I physically can. And soon our population will start flooding in. As you can see, we have 15 inhabitants. So just what kind of people do we have living in our towns? Peasants, ladies and gentlemen, peasants. I mean, they are quite strange. Um, when they open their mouths, I'm not going to lie, you can see literally right through their mouths into the pits of hell itself. But other than that, they're, you know, not bad character modelling for its time. Anyway, on Goldford, we're going to basically do the same thing and set up a lovely little marketplace and surround it with houses. Now, how much is it going to cost us to do our first excavation? Well, if we come over to good old Kudo Von Rembold, that's a very powerful name, my friend, we can pay him in various supplies to get him to do a higher quality excavation. We could get him to do a simple one. That's not going to yield the best results. A huge quantity of goods, however, is likely to give us a ridiculously powerful reward. So yes, we're going to supply him with all of that, and he's actually going to start doing his excavation. And in five minutes time, we'll be able to come back here 
and something wonderful will start happening. Now as our population slowly ticks up, as you can probably guess, we start unlocking new buildings. We'll go from having peasants to having actual people who contribute to society. But of course, to reward the peasants and also to convince them to pay more taxes, you need to start supplying them with some of their desires. So if we click on the peasant house over here, we can see that they are fully satisfied with food and fully satisfied with their access to a marketplace. However, their need for drink isn't satisfied. Equally, their need for faith isn't satisfied either. Now, for a need for drink, you might think, well, these peasants, they just need access to a fresh water source. Uh, no. No, they don't. They need cider. Yes. If you want to make your peasants happy, you need to make sure they're drunk 24-7. So, we're going to be slapping down a cider farm near our port. And the cider of this will convince the peasants that actually, they should be paying more in the form of taxes. Now, for this early part of the game, we are effectively just sat around waiting until we discover something wonderful from this dig site. Now, we could rush ahead, but honestly, ladies and gentlemen, there's no need. One thing we will do, however, is get our lovely ship over here to collect something from good old Lord Richard Northborough, and that is a fancy piece of paper. It's a splendid gift for a guest. I don't know, it's kind of like a picture with maybe a good meme on it. I guess Ricardo memes, they always do quite well. Maybe Moto Moto memes. So we're going to grab this Moto Moto meme on a piece of parchment signed by the Emperor himself and sell it all the way down here to the Orient and hand it to this lovely man over here. And he is going to be so overwhelmed by our extensive meme collection that he's going to give us permission to colonize. I know, that's right, permission to colonize. I didn't even think the British needed a permission to colonize, but apparently we do in this game. Now our dig site has been a success. Now currently another excavation is not possible until they've had a nice long rest, but in the meantime, they did deliver us something. As you can see in our lovely small warehouse, we have this thing right here, a gold piece edict. Now this allows us to forcefully have peace with all AI players for the duration of an entire hour. An entire hour. That's an hour in-game time. If someone's attacking you, you can just go, a uh, nope, and they can't do anything for an hour. Oh god, this is a horrible item. But hey, you know, we've got it now. And one thing we can do is uh, just put it right here in our little storage of our small warehouse. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, hover over this and uh, just click. Now, uh, you'll notice we had one gold piece edict. Uh, but uh, there suddenly appears to be a second gold piece edict. Where did you come from? Oh, well, I have. I don't know. Let's just get rid of this one. I'm just going to uh, put it on the ship over here. So there we go. We've got our gold PC edict over here on the arena. That must have been a fluke accident. There's no, there's no way you can get a second gold PC edict, but a third gold PC edict. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening here? So we have um, three big go away things. Yeah, make that, make that four. And you know what? Whilst we're at it, might as well. Get ourselves five of these gold PC edicts. Yeah, there we go. So uh, now I've got a ship literally laden with massive go away peace treaties, meaning the AI can no longer physically touch us. We have become invincible. Oh, and the Grand Vizier has just been greeted by our lovely Moto Moto meme. Hey, Grand Vizier, I heard Moto Moto likes you. And lo and behold, he said thank you very much and has now given me permission to just slap down massive colonies on his land. And you know what, he's even loaded up an entire ship full of dates, iron and wood and has told me to settle his lands. Oh, you know what, with a request like that, how could I turn you down? And we'll just slap down our lovely harbour right there. Oh, and look at this, Lord Richard is congratulating me on colonising the Orient. You know what, this is the first time I've ever been congratulated for forceful colonisation. feel quite proud. Anyway, over here in this small warehouse, we're going to drop off one of these lovely peace emblems. And in the peace emblem, you know, we can just spam it again and load up this ship with four peace emblems. So there we go. This ship has four lovely gold piece edicts. Now, you can sell these things, but they don't sell for gold because, you know, it doesn't make sense. You can buy peace edicts for honor. So, of course, logically, you can only sell them for honor. But how much honor? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very spicy amount. So, we have our lovely ship over here, the Orina, and he is going to say hello to Lord Richard. Now, Lord Richard, he loves all things peace. In fact, he just loves literally buying anything. This man is phenomenal. He will buy dirt from you if you shovel it up and dump it on his docks. He is so excited just to see you. And guess what? You can sell him these lovely gold peace edicts. So, there you go. Take one. 
Oh, you're going to give me 125 honor for that? That's almost as much honor as we have. What if we give you all of them? That's 500 honor. That's almost five times the honor that we have. That's five times the honor we started out with, and, uh... Certainly the AI is not going to be having that, so of course, Ego, take all of that, give me 500 honor, I'm very happy. And we can just sail this ship back here to Goldford, and guess what ladies and gentlemen, we can just load them up with another ton of gold edicts, because we have so many of them. It's wonderful. Now what can you do of honor? Well there's quite a few things you can do. For a start we can hop in diplomacy, and as you can see we can enter diplomatic relations with roughly anyone. Now we can go over to the Grand Vizier and we can call an auxiliary fleet. This effectively will force the Grand Vizier to give us a large oriental warship, one of the most powerful battleships in the game. We can do it for 400 honor. Very simple indeed. And from Lord Richard Northborough, equally we can ask for two small warships for the low low cost of 300 honor. Very nice. Also I'm going to sign a peace with the Corsairs as this means they'll start running around our settlements and trading with us. Now when it comes to Lord Richard Northborough and the Grand Vizier, there's one thing they're always willing to do, and that is give us a loan. Now loans in this game don't work like normal games. It's not a case where you take out 1,000 gold and you give 1,500 back. No, no, no. Instead, you take out a loan, you never pay it back. It only costs you honor. So we're going to request a loan, and we're going to request a generous loan. There is a 75% chance of success, so we could fail this, but we're going to request a generous loan, and we're going to give a generous amount of our honor, and we're bam. Seriously, he's not- we were on the 25% chance! Oh my goodness, the sheer luck on that. That's fine, we can go to Grand Vizier. So we go to Grand Vizier, we request a loan, we select a generous loan, and in return we'll give him 40 honor, and there we go. Oh, so he will give us 1,000 gold coins for the cost of 40 honor. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, 40 honor, that's not actually that much considering we get about 150 honor per gold piece edict. So effectively what we're doing here is we are loading up these ships with the honor equivalent of liquid gold. So if one ship gains us 500 honor, and about a thousand gold is, well, it's not quite 50 honor, it's 40, but we'll round it up to 50 for my simplistic math sake, then that means that each time we sail the ship from here to here, we have generated 10,000 in gold, and at basically no cost to ourselves. It's absolutely wonderful. But of course, you know, you might be thinking, well, gold isn't everything in this game. Having a large fleet still counts for something. That's true. But if we needed a fleet, we just summon one. If you want to buy a ship as well, you can go over to the Corsairs over here and just buy this ship off of them. In fact, we can call in an auxiliary fleet using honor, sail it round here, and we can sell the ship that we got as an auxiliary fleet for about six grand. Yes, this game is quite unique. Anyway, I'm going to sell all of our lovely gold peace edicts, and in return I will also buy all of their steel and wood, because I have a good plan. We're going to be doing Operation Cuck the AI, and by that I mean we're going to colonize all of the other islands in this game without them realizing. Now of course for that we're going to need a ridiculous supply of resources, so we're just going to basically plunder our own marketplaces and colonize the entirety of the Orient. Come on ladies and gentlemen, we can't let anyone else do it. What if someone else comes along here and they have different ideals and they're like, well you know what, we've set up all of these colonies and we're charging them pretty high tariffs, maybe we should give them the right to vote in parliamentary elections. What if people start asking questions like that? It's too risky ladies and gentlemen, we need to cut them off at the pass. And by that I mean colonize the entirety of the Orient. Now up here in the north we're also going to settle another colony. And then you grab all of the supplies from said colony and just immediately move on to the next island. And over here in the south we can slap down and build ourselves a lovely little warehouse. And there we go, that's another Orient island colonized. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. I'm loving all of this rapid colonization. Now at the moment we're going to start causing a bit of a panic for the AI. Mostly because we're grabbing everything that can be physically colonized all in one very quick go. But of course there is absolutely nothing they can do. We've got all of the ships on location and they are poised and ready to grab islands. Over here we have two ships of our lovely white AI who is probably going to try and colonize this island over here. But don't worry ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be grabbing them. Oh wait, hang on a second. Hang on a second. This island can cultivate spices and coffee. <sighs> well, you know ladies and gentlemen, as much as I'd love to uh, not take this island and simply watch it be burnt to the ground, I'm afraid we need to take this island for the sole purpose that if someone else were to take this island, they'd start trying to grow coffee, ladies and gentlemen. 
<sighs> and we just can't be having that. If we control the island, we control the coffee. And by that I mean we control the distinct lack of coffee. Now normally if you were to play a, a game of Anno, and you were to do my strategy of try and colonize all the islands as fast as possible, all you end up doing is aggravating the AI to the point where they're going to attack you. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, remember, the AI can't attack us. If the AI were ever to make a move, we just pop one of these gold PC dicks and away they go for an hour. I must say, it's busy work trying to colonize everywhere simultaneously. There's a lot of micromanagement that needs to be done. But hey, once all this is sorted, we can just sit back, relax, and plain sail our way to one million. If anything, I'm wondering if we do the entire thing on peasants and not even try and upgrade our class. Because class is a very, very important thing, not only in the British Empire, but also in Anno. Class is the one thing that separates everyone from eating fish and groups us into categories of some people who eat fish and other people who eat fish with a bit of spicy stuff sprinkled on. It. Now many of you might be sat back thinking, actually you know what, Smith, that's not how it works. I've got a full degree in psychology and sociology, and I know that there's a little bit more to the class system than just a spicy fish. And ladies and gentlemen, you're wrong. Trust me, this game is all about its spicy fish. Now our lovely settlement of Wolfshaven is growing really, really well. I mean, I say that, I'm not too certain, really. But we do have a lot of people on the island. 399 peasants, to be precise. All of whom are paying glorious taxes. And what are the taxes being spent on? Well, it's a good thing you asked. They're being spent on random huts sitting in the desert. Because these guys cost 10 gold per turn to upkeep. Now, the people of Wolfshaven, they need something, and they need it bad. And that is a church. Honestly, churches are everything. They are absolutely incredible. But we're not going to be building just any church ladies and gentlemen no today we're going to be building the church of tea and we're going to build it right here it's going to be a church dedicated to teaching people of the way of drinking tea consuming tea and enjoying tea and all those who don't attend will be judged as heretics but hey now that we've supplied them with tea suddenly all of our peasants are excited and they can actually move up to the next age as you can see we bam all those green arrows means they want to advance to being a citizen. But as I was saying, something separates the classes in this game. Peasants, as you see, eat only fish. But what do our citizens eat? Well, our citizens eat fish and spice. They eat just spicy fish. And it's that massive difference there which allows them to wear the ponty little hats and for the peasant to just wear raggedy little clothes and has the mouth which genuinely has a portal to hell itself. Now we could, you know, invest time and money and make sure all of our lovely peasants rank up to being citizens, but is it really worthwhile? What if we only have, you know, two houses rank up and then of one of these houses that ranks up, we'll rank that up to the next level. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the way of going forwards. We're going to have one house dedicated to being a citizen, one house dedicated to being a patrician, which I do believe comes after that, and then everyone else can just be a peasant. Ah, it's going to be flawless. And now that we've unlocked citizens, we can buy citizen goods from Lord Richard Northborough. But of course, unlocking them costs... <gasps> Oh no, well it's a good thing we have a ton of that. So yes, there we go, we've just unlocked all of these lovely citizen level goods including coal, stone and rope. Hmm, kinky. Now we're going to be basically buying these because as we're never going to have enough citizens, being the fact that I only plan to have one house of citizens, we won't be able to actually ever make rope, stone or coal, but we can buy it. Now this game also has a kind of tech tree of sorts. As you can see, they're called attainments. Now you level these up by doing, you know, various tasks along the game. And down here, as you can see, they cost honor. So to start our Imperial Merchant Fleet, which allows us to recruit one extra ship and also increase our ship budget, it's going to cost us 150 honor. Good thing we have an absolute ton of honor lying around. And then immediately, we can advance to the next stage, including a Royal Armada, which makes our ability to summon auxiliary fleets even more powerful and the Regent Seal to make all of our diplomatic abilities even stronger, and also Occidental Shipbuilding to make all of our ships even more overpowered. Now we move it down even further, and we can increase the hit points of all of our buildings by 10%, and increase all of the damage by 5%, and so on and so forth. You can see this is getting out of hand a bit quickly. Now we're going to be basically spamming out a few more of these lovely gold peace seals for a few logical reasons. Mostly we could do a little
little bit more honor as I would love to rank up these lovely little ascensions and get some of these crazy little bonuses. Now on our main island of Wolfshaven I'm just setting up a few more cider plantations as we prepare ourselves for the age of great peasant expansion. I mean this island, come on ladies and gentlemen, it's only got 454 peasants on it. We need to increase those numbers. Those are rookie peasant numbers. So naturally we're going to just expand out even more marketplaces containing even more peasants who will pay, you guessed it, even more taxes. Who knew you could run an entire kingdom slash empire just off of fish and really poorly constructed wooden huts. Oh and also the peasants uh, were going to up their taxes because at the moment they were only paying 520 taxes but uh, we're going to put them to even tempered peasants which basically means they're giving me 793 gold. A uh, very nice. Now my peasant adventure in Wolfshaven just keeps expanding. It's doing really quite well. And you know what, we might as well do another excavation soon. It's only going to set us back 20 tons of wood and 20 tons of tools, which honestly is completely and utterly worth it. Imagine it, ladies and gentlemen. If we thought the gold peace seal was a tad overpowered, imagine what else lies waiting underneath this one suspicious Stonehenge looking area. I'm just going to speed up the game so we get access to our 20 tons of wood, and then we'll start our next expedition. But honestly, Wolfshaven, it's doing great. There we go, we have our 20 tons of wood, so we'll start our lovely excavation. And apparently Lord Northborough is so proud of our trade relationship, he's going to give us an extra 40 honour. Thanks. Honour was exactly what I needed right now. Oh, and by accident, I've accidentally uh, silenced everyone with a peace treaty. And I can't get rid of it for another 59 minutes. I physically can't stop it. Right. Well, I guess we're at peace with everyone for an hour. Thanks, game. I didn't mean to do that. Honestly, I'd like to attack people. But no, no, we're not able to attack people anymore, are we? No, that would be too much fun game, wouldn't it? Now, this game is pretty fun and basic. You've got happy peasant, then you've got sad peasant. You've got happy peasant, you've got sad peasant. Oh, the many stages of peasant. Equally, we have happy citizen, and we have angry citizen. Happy citizen. Angry citizen. Because as we all know, there's basically only two states to life. Now one thing that I have done to make this strategy easier is I've upgraded the small warehouse over at Wolfshaven to a medium warehouse, allowing me to do our lovely little spam click over here, and suddenly we end up with two gold piece edicts instead of just one. Now that's increased profit in a shorter period of time. Who doesn't like that? Oh, and sadly our friend in the excavation site didn't find anything this time around, so we've got to try again. A real shame I was hoping for something as broken as our lovely mandatory peace time. But hey, instead we got a piece of an antique vase, which I'm pretty sure just means it's completely and utterly useless. I'm just going to grind up a good bit of honour and I'll get back to it in a second once I've ground up just enough honour to uh, cheese the game just a little bit. Now after we break Anno, I've got a few other games that are on my list to break. There's this lovely little game called Kenchi, which is a tad wacky weird and set in a post-apocalyptic world, which of course I'll probably break. Beyond that I found another exploit for Age of Empires 2, which is making me want to return to the game once more. Partly so that I can use the exploit, and also partly just so that I can irritate you with how okay I am at Age of Empires 2. I am by far no means a very good player at Age of Empires 2, but what I am good at is manipulating games in a way that benefits me the most. Now we've got all of our ships down here, so we're just going to sell them to the Corsairs for 1,400 gold each. Now that's not bad at all. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. It's very easy money for us. So there we go, we summoned a fleet of ships that we can't use, and we sold them for 1,500 gold each. At the end of the day, that's a fair amount of profit for us. Now the Oriental Warehouse is also very unique. As you can see, it starts out immediately with three empty slots unlocked, which means you can spam clone to your heart's content, and it's suddenly very easy to get all of these wonderful gold PC edicts. And the best thing is, thanks to our lovely map seed, our Oriental Warehouse is basically next door to the Orient. Now there's one issue with this many peasants. Feeding them starts to get a tad difficult. Fishing isn't exactly the most useful source of food, and as a result, actually supplying enough fish has proven a bit difficult. We've had to increase our number of fishermen docks from two to six. Oh, these are some hungry peasants. But for the good of the empire, ladies and gentlemen, I am willing to do anything. So don't worry, the peasants will be given their fish. 
Well, on our starting island, the population of peasants has risen to an astronomical 1056. In fact, they're providing us a very tasty income of 805 at the moment. Some would say we're not charging them enough tax. Yes, more tax peasants, more! Actually, I'm going to do something controversial. For the first time ever, I'm going to let the peasants level themselves up. That's right, ascension rights have been released. These peasants, it's time for them to be upwardly mobile. So we're going to make them euphoric and we're going to move a few peasants into the wonderful age of citizens. And the reason why is citizens pay more taxes, they'll fill up more houses, and also eventually we're going to be able to get patricians. But in order to get patricians, we need at least 355 citizens. Good lord, you can see what I'm having to deal with here. As you can see, as more citizens move in, they're suddenly starting to pay more tax than the peasants. Because peasant houses, they can only fit 8 people. Citizen houses, however, 15. That's almost double the amount of people you can tax, and that kind of thing just can't be overlooked. And there we go, we can suddenly now build a brand new tavern to make everyone happy. This will fulfill the need for amusement, which all of our lovely citizens want. And as soon as they have that, then, well done, wabam, we get to start getting some patricians. But first, we're going to need some resources for that. Most importantly, stone and tools. So we'll go and grab some. So to fulfill our need for entertainment from Lord Northbro, we're just going to buy an absolute ton of stone and also a couple of tools to go alongside it. Lovely. And we'll sail this back to our own harbour and get it all set up. Now that we have the resources, we can slap down that lovely tavern that I wanted. So we bam, the tavern's down, and suddenly the citizens are ready to level themselves up. So we're going to grant one ascension right to the lucky citizen that is now going to become a patrician. Now patrician houses can fit 25 morbidly obese people. I'm not sure how they're meant to fit 25 morbidly obese people in that tiny house, but somehow they manage. Now patricians are an absolute pain because they not only require fish and spice, they also want bread, and suddenly they want more than standard churches, they also want massive cathedrals, and to drink they don't just want cider, they also want beer and for clothing they need linen garments as well as leather garments oh it's an absolute mess of course naturally we're going to provide absolutely none of that instead we're just going to have patricians just so that we can get more trade from Kingsport and our lovely friend over here Lord Richard Northborough so we'll unlock the advanced trade goods as well as these lovely ones over here now the joy of having patricians is that we can suddenly level up all of our amenities once more now yes we don't quite have noblemen but patricians are very powerful so we're going to upgrade to having an imperial merchant fleet meaning our fleet size increases and a royal armada meaning now when we summon a armada suddenly we get two small warships and one large warship the regent seal is also going to allow all of our diplomatic actions a higher chance of success and our ships are going to become more powerful in every regard and now that we've leveled up we can spend more honor when asking for a loan so lord richard northborough we're now going to give him 150 honor and in return he's given us five grand mm, now that's well spent now another way you can kind of cheese the game a bit is via these wonderful things here called a toll. Now you see tolls are basically the cost of moving a good around. Effectively if you trade with my empire and there is a toll in active, for every five tons of units you move you have to effectively give us some beer. That's how this lovely toll beer works. Now this can effectively be exploited because if you were to stack up a ton of beer tolls on random islands that aren't really doing any trading, a AI will come over there, do a little bit of trade, and then suddenly discover that they've had to fork over about six tons of beer. Beer can of course be used to try and pacify the patricians, however we don't really have a need for patricians, so really we don't really have a need for the beer toll. I mostly just wanted to show it off to you, because once you upgrade from a medium warehouse to a large warehouse, you can stack three of these toll things simultaneously, so so moves five tons of goods around, now that you got three beer tolls activated, suddenly you're now receiving free beer. So that's three tons of beer for say every time someone buys five fish. And also, you know what, I think it's time we have another expedition because at the moment uh, we could use an expedition. Now what you might start noticing is a lot of these houses over here suddenly seem to be a little bit more scorched than we remember them. Uh, the reason being is there's fires regularly. Basically our people don't know how to put out fires, they only know how to start them in their own homes and then watch them engulf their own homes. But 
hey, you know, I don't really have the time or effort to invest in water fountains to stop all of these fires. What I do have time to invest in, though, is 20 tons of iron so that we can do an excavation and get something completely random from a pit in the ground. And you know what? The time has come where we can levy another auxiliary fleet. So I'm going to call an auxiliary fleet in from Lord Richard Northborough of two small warships and one large warship. Oh, that's going to be incredible. And also I'm going to call in a Occidental Auxiliary Fleet of two large Oriental warships. Oh, these are some mighty ships indeed. Look at these two huge warships. They are massive. With 11 attack each, these are some mighty powerful bad boys. But they cost 60 gold a tick to maintain, so naturally we're going to sell them to the pirates. Also, this is one of those games where it actually reminds you that you've been playing Anno for two hours, and genuinely the game just asked me, how about a coffee? They recorded a voice line telling me, the spiffing Brit, that I've been playing this game for two hours and I should go for a coffee break. Oh, game. You're stepping a very fine line. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to start a petition for Anno 1800 to change that over to How about a cup of tea? And we got our dig. What is it? It is the Minstrel's Duclet Harp. It extends the influence area of taverns. I guess that's rather useful because my tavern over here can suddenly reach all the way down here, which isn't bad at all. Thanks that good old Minstrel Harp. But of course, one Minstrel Harp, that's, that's not good enough. No, 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 no. We need more. So we unsocket it, and we clone it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, more minstrel harps. Soon everywhere can have a minstrel harp. You know what, we should do another large exhibition. This one only requires wooden fish. Very easy. Away you go. I'm just going to speed up the entire game so I see what I get from your little expedition. Oh, and we've discovered something. Oh, it's very wacky. So we have our gold peace edict over here. We discovered the gold alliance edict. Right. So the Gold Peace Treaty manually forces peace with another AI, and all AIs, for an hour. The Gold Alliance Treaty goes the step beyond that. It doesn't just enforce peace, it forces an alliance for a full hour. An entire alliance. Why is this a feature? Why the heck is this a feature? <laughs> This is such a messed up feature to have. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to grab one of them and see how much they sell for because this is a great laugh. But manually forcing an alliance. What on earth? What on earth is going on? Right, I'm going to see how much I can sell all of these alliance treaties for because, because I've somehow stumbled upon somewhat of a windfall of slightly overpowered and broken items. So yes, our lovely gold alliance treaty sells for 175. Of course it does. Oh my god, that is so... I just have no words. Why is that a feature in this game? You know, I think we've probably taken all of the wacky items we can out of this mine. I'm just going to fast forward in this game, see how crazy and far off we can get into the future, because I honestly have no idea. At the moment, the game is completely utterly broken. We can ally all of the AI simultaneously and destroy the pirates if we really wanted, but no, that, that ruins the fun from the game. Instead, I'm just going to... I guess slowly peasant our way towards 1 million by holding down the speed up key and of course stockpiling a ridiculous amount of honor which we physically just can't use. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, you join me sometime later playing Anno once again. This time however our situation has developed somewhat. Uh, as you can see we have all of these gold alliance edicts and yes they are more valuable than our peace edicts. And I've discovered something rather impressive. If we were to go to Kingsport and sell all four of them, we're given 700 honor. Now, 700 honor might not sound like much, but if we go over to Diplomacy and go over to Lord Richard Northborough here, we can summon an auxiliary fleet for 300 honor, and we can summon an auxiliary fleet for 400 honor. Meaning, combined, that's 700 honor. So, this one little short diplomatic ferry, which took us about, hmm, two minutes, equates to, effectively, two large warships, a third large warship, and two small warships. So, in total, three large warships and two small warships for the cost of me literally moving a duplicated item from over here to over here. Hmm, that seems a bit too easy to me, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little bit. Some would say, delightfully devilish, Seymour. Please, I hope to God some people get that reference. Come on, not all memes are dead. Now, what I'm about to do is actually get an incredible achievement. 
You see, this game has quite a few little achievements which give you a few bonus points, and one of them, which I recently received, was the Silver Badge of Honor, which is just how 5,000 Honor sat around. Well, you know what? We're going to up it a little bit. We're going to get to 10,000 Honor. Wabam! We just unlocked Vitamin B, apparently, and with it, we've gained the title The Honorable. That's right. Suddenly, when we go on Anno 1404 multiplayer, sure, I'm sure someone's still playing it, or at least I can face them on the field of battle and use my incredible title that I've gained. Oh, I knew I could be a pro gamer one day. And I've finally managed to get 60 dates together and 20 iron so that we can start our next excavation. Lovely stuff. Oh my goodness. And the expedition is complete. We've been given... What is this? Ironclad full armor. Increased hit points by 20%. Well, it's pretty wacky, I'll give it that. But hey, not we'll have a few of those. That's not bad at all. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A fair amount of time has passed, but we're back in the wonderful Spiftopian British Empire. Now, quite a few things have developed. You'll notice we have a lot more money than when I left, but also we're about to renew our treaty with the pirates. Now, this costs 20,000 gold, a lot of money, but we've reached a golden point because as soon as you renew past a certain amount, so this is 14 treaties with them, you're able to somehow form some kind of mega alliance. So I'm going to accept this, and now I've done 14 packs with them, all I need to do is do some kind of special mission for them, and then I can apparently offer them fraternization, whatever that means. Oh, and also I need money, so uh, Richard Northborough, give it to me. Thanks for that five grand. What about you, Grand Vizier? Have you got another five grand for me? Of course you have. Also, can I borrow that fleet of yours? Thank you, yes, that fleet's going to do wonderful. And yours as well, please, yes. Oh, how kind of you to just give me a ton of ships. Ah, oh, and Hassan has given me the mission. The feast. Deliver him 120 tons of meat, 160 tons of beer, and 120 tons of weapons. Right. You know what? We might as well give this a try. Right, I do not actually believe that's physically even possible for us, because we'd have to somehow organize together meat, which is, uh, you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, not a resource we even physically have access to. So instead, I'm just going to sail my fleet over to annoy them. Oh, and the game has just told me I've been playing for four hours and I should go away. Well, it's not my fault, game. It's not my fault you take so long to record videos of. But they do raise a fair point. I could do with a nice cup of tea. So yes, hopefully we'll hit the one million mark soon. The game will finish. I can successfully tick Anno off my belt of games that I've broken. Now, at the moment in this game, I have quite simply the largest fleet, mostly due to the fact that I've just been hiring auxiliary fleets, and so I have the strongest fleet in the known world. Of course, all of this is due to our infinite honor, so I'm using this massive, ridiculous, over-the-top fleet to escort tiny little escort ships off of the map. I mean, to be fair, they have absolutely nothing else to do, because none of the heroes can fight each other due to the infinite peace I've declared. I must say, we do appear to be getting close now. We have 93,000, and to get ourselves over the edge, what I'm going to do is that auxiliary fleet that I hired... I'm afraid I don't particularly need you anymore. I'm going to sell you over to the pirates who are going to scrap you for whatever money we can get from you. So naturally, I'm going to sell all of my ships to him because, you know, they're worth a little bit of cash. I could even sell my capital ship, but something tells me that's probably a bad idea. And we find ourselves on the home stretch now with just 30,000 to go. Good lord. Just a couple more ships to sell and we'll almost be there. The game keeps shouting me they have a ridiculous amount of honor shaved up. It honestly wants me to spend it, but I mean, what do I even spend it on? There's nothing in this game that I need to purchase. I've completed the game. Well, the Corsairs want to charge me 20,000. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to accept this time because we're about to tick over into one million little Corsairs. And there we go. We've done it. That was it. We've actually finally won a game. Oh, God. Oh, I've been playing this game too long. Oh, God, Anno. I've really missed this game, honestly, I have. I do love Anno, but, uh, my goodness, this is, uh... <laughs> way too long. It's been a long time since I've played it, and honestly, it's brought back a lot of love for the whole Anno series for me, and I'm quite excited to see what Anno 1800 brings. Given that it has an even larger colonial spin, it really does have a huge focus on colonizing the new world and making sure you exploit it for all of its wonderful goodness. So if you guys are interested, give me a shout and I'll make sure to cover Anno 1800 because I've already got a few exploits lined up for that game. There is some pretty crazy things going on with the item 
and mechanics as well. If you thought the items were a little unbalanced in this game, wait until you've seen the beta version of Anno 1800. Anyway, thank you very much for watching ladies and gents. If you have enjoyed the video today then please do give it a like, please do consider subscribing to join our absolutely wonderful community, it would be lovely to have you. Seriously, if you haven't thought about doing it yet, subscribing, it's a very simple thing and I'd absolutely love to have you with us. As always, a massive thank you to my majestic patrons who make all of these fantastic videos possible by bankrolling all of my various production costs, including my editor, is absolutely wonderful. So to each and every one of you, I tip my hat and raise a cup of tea. Thank you very much. And if you're looking for a video to watch next, then I strongly recommend this one on screen now. It's been chosen especially by myself just for you, and trust me, you're gonna love it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a lovely day.